hello and welcome, Nicole <laughs> McKenzie. Hi. And I can say your surname because it's on your page. Yes. Right, let's just get into this as quickly as possible because you've got okay. loads to say. Yes, so, Nicole, as always. <laughs> your, your um, bio and Instagram says, anyway, re- is it recovering? Do you call it recovering? Yeah, well, basically I. Um, from? Topical steroid withdrawal. Aye, topical steroid withdrawal. Yep. And, but there's that. I think that's really where you are now. So yeah, when I read that, I'm 100%, like, right, so yeah. that's where you are now, but yeah. your actual whole story, and I've just been saying to you that I followed Nicola ages ago because I saw a really emotional video that she put out, and I was nearly greeting watching it, and it wasn't the one with the cling film, and I oh, keep God, thinking of that film. one, that, that one breaks my heart, really? breaks my oh, heart, God. I... Um, but it wasn't that one. It was the other one where you 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 can visibly see how bad your skin is, mm. and you're in floods of tears, and it's just so painful yeah. to, to watch. I know. To the, to the, but good that it's out yeah. there. You know, not. Oh, definitely. You know I mean? Sometimes I like. Sometimes I can look back at it and I'm like, oh, that's it's like, thank God I'm not there anymore. But then other times it's like PTSD. I'm like, I can't watch oh, that you, at all I because do, I, yeah. just the fear of it happening to me again mm-hmm. and going through that again, I don't think I'd be mentally strong enough to uh, actually do it. Uh, so it's, it's sometimes, horrific. it just depends, I think, what my skin is like and going through and probably my mental state as well, whether I can actually watch it or not, you know, because uh, I, I feel uh. bad ignoring it because I, I do help people still now yeah. but part of me is like so I completely powerful. want to forget that that mm-hmm. ever happened to me because it was so damaging no. but no but you do need to leave it there for that reason it needs it's to be so left there powerful. Yeah. and when I was doing a wee bit of research I'm like there isn't a lot of people talk about their skin and Aye. I get it I get it yeah um because it is it is a really big it does have a huge impact on your mental health and how you feel oh, about yourself. I know, 100%. So I totally get that. But do you know, I haven't Googled it, sixty percent of the UK, sixty percent of people what, suffer ha- with skin conditions. Oh, if you're going to say steroids as well, that is crazy. No, 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 no,
because at that age it's like peak on Instagram like TikTok wasn't even a thing anymore like at this point yeah. Mm -hmm. everyone was showing this you know lavish lifestyle uh, of how they look and yeah beautiful like at perfection. that at that yeah. age like I had just been able to start drinking get out with my friends like I was out every weekend pretty much had just met my boyfriend like a matter of months before and yeah I think it just maybe the stress of feeling and looking a certain way and not being able to hide it because it is all over my skin like it, you know top everyone does see it top to toe yeah mm -hmm. it just spread everywhere um I think I just get stressed out about it and just get naturally worse mm -hmm. um I didn't really I, I kind of I went back and forth to the doctors but I was quite happy with what I was using because it was kind of helping and it was it was just kind of coming and going like it would be worse on certain days and then it would go away for a wee while and then it would come back so now when I think back I do think there was like underlying stresses throughout my life that would maybe make it peak and drop mm -hmm. and whatever mm -hmm. um and that is known but, as well that that is uh, known that stress that can I uh -huh. so people some people say that stress can cause eczema I don't believe that I think stress can make it flare I think mm -hmm. you you have to have some sort of underlying issue anyway, in regards to like something dry skin mm -hmm. or you know, they all they say it's a gut issue, so if I'm eating the wrong foods, like inflammatory foods that will cause my skin to break down or whatever, then that will that will happen. So I have always had it. I can't say I was stressed at three weeks old. Is that <laughs> I, I, I mean yeah. might I might have been, but it was always but there. Do you know what I mean? But it's like there's there's other factors that will cause it to yeah, flare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just as much as there's factors that will bring it down. Are you just do you know trying I mean? to control a condition that you've got yeah. using other methods yeah. available? Uh -huh. But it's interesting that it really blew up for want of a better phrase when you turned 18 I know. you know when you're getting into adulthood Literally, and you're, you're, you become aware yeah. of so much more and stressful things yeah. that, that and, it's, you know. and this is the annoying thing it's like that time like in my personal life I was so happy like as I said I had like I worked in Tesco um, in the bakery absolutely loved I loved my job like absolutely loved my job um, I loved everyone I worked with um, I had not long met Kyle, so everything was just really good in my life. I didn't really have that many issues, especially, you know, probably just an 18-year-old girl, really, that just mm -hmm. wanted to go out and have a good time. But it just, the more the kind of months went on, the years went on, and every single time I went to the doctor, the only option was a steroid. That, that's all they wanted to give me. But I had kind of known about the dangers of steroids just mm -hmm. from posting on Instagram. Is that cream or oral? Uh, so you can get both, but topical mm -hmm. is uh, cream. cream. Right, uh -huh. okay. I um, so I, I would take the prescription. I would maybe use it like very sparingly, as I said, right? Mm -hmm. But I just knew that it wasn't going to fix things. So at this point, I was posting on Instagram. I was doing like gluten free diets, dairy free diets, um, UV light treatment, like Had anything. Had you started the cream at this point? No. Right. Okay. So. Going through steroid withdrawal, that actually only happened to me when I started steroids in 2021. So from being, like, I can't even count what age I would have been. But what from, like, now? so I'm 27. Right, okay. So, so I only started using steroids when I was, what, 24? Right. So we've not got to that bit yeah. then. Sorry, yeah. I'm interrupting. So, so, aye, so say for the bulk of it from, like, 18 to 24, I just tried different treatments, different diets, different creams and nothing would work not really steroid cream i would always be prescribed it but i would never use it or just I, if, I, knew... if i did just because i knew from posting on instagram that loads of people would tell me that it can lead to topical steroid withdrawal so my skin was to me so bad at the time that i thought well i'm i can't afford to make this any worse so i'm not going to use it because i would notice anyway that say there was maybe like two days where i would use it if something was really sore you would put the cream on and within a day it would be gone and you're like, how potent is that for that mm -hmm. to just disappear? Mm -hmm. Like something that's leaving me in completely agony and it's been sitting there for weeks and weeks and weeks. I put this cream on within a day or two, it's completely gone. So when you were desperate, you would use it just as mm -hmm. a quick fix. Mm -hmm. Like, so for example, if I was going out at the weekend, my skin during the week was maybe a wee bit flared up. I'd put a wee bit of steroid on it and it would be gone. And that was fixed. But then mm -hmm. because you're just damaging the skin, it would just come back and it would come back with a vengeance so it would come back worse because basically the steroid just thins your skin so it leaves your skin very vulnerable to then external factors environmental factors that will then just cause the skin to go dry or the skin to start weeping and bleeding whatever so i kind of at that point just kind of chose not to to use it um mm -hmm. ended up being on an immunosuppressant 
for three years. Um, I think that was from when I was like 22 to 25, I think. I can't remember now when I think about it. And how mentally was it affecting you through all of that? Do you remember how you felt at that point? Eh, aye, terrible. Like, absolutely terrible. I, I was never... Like, I, I mean, I, I've got highlights on my Instagram of me just sitting crying on my Instagram stories mm. because oh, no. I was mm -hmm. just so lost. Like, I had no idea what to do. And that is the only reason I turned to Instagram because I felt like there's no way... Like, to me... I felt like the only the only person in the world that had this condition because I didn't know anyone within my circle. I didn't go to school with anyone that was openly, you know, openly spoke about having a skin condition. There probably would have been people that had it, but no one spoke about it, so mm -hmm. I didn't know. Mm -hmm. And I honestly felt like completely different from my friends. No one in my family had it, and I just did not know where to turn because the NHS would only give me steroids, and I just thought there, there there's got to be a reason that my skin's acting like this. Um, so I went to Instagram, spoke to a lot of people, learned so much more about it in regards to the diets and topical steroid mm. withdrawal. Um, and it kind of just went from there that I just kept doing my own research. So I then found out about methotrexate, which is an immunosuppressant. Um, and basically because I was still in and out of hospital with my skin flaring up and, you know, getting really bad, I just said to them, like, I, I want an immunosuppressant. I've looked into it. I've done my own research. I know that that's what my body needs because I physically need something from the inside out because anything that's just going on to my skin, it's not fixing the problem. Right, so what would that educate us on so, an Im immunosuppressant? So, what? weirdly, so when I first got it, right, the doctor actually said to me, we actually scientifically don't know how this works for skin conditions, right? It's basically a form of chemotherapy. So cancer patients are given it when they're about to go through chemo or radiotherapy or whatever. I don't actually know the ins and outs of that. But they realised that cancer patients with skin conditions that were taking methotrexate for their cancer, their skin was clearing up. And that's how it evolved. Like, that's how the research started. So that's in the short... Mental, it is mental. It is mental. So in the short and sweet, the girl basically said... It suppresses your immune system because your immune system is producing too many toxins. The toxins exit your skin because it's your largest organ. My skin can't cope with that because yeah, it's just yeah. too much. So it basically suppresses it to try and get rid of all the toxins so and that it's not causing inflammation. That's what it is. That's what causes your skin condition. I didn't know any of that. I'm asking I don't genuinely. Know. All right. I actually, I don't know. This is the thing. Like I've lost so much trust in doctors because... Everything they've gave me, I mean, minus methotrexate, because I'm on it again. So basically, I was on it for three years, right? Um, I was obviously younger at the time. And it was during COVID that I decided to come off it because I felt I was in the house, you know, I was isolating because I was on methotrexate because I was classed as high risk because obviously it's an immunosuppressant. Um, so I decided to come off it on my own and try and focus on my diet and whatever because I felt like... If I come off methotrexate, it's just going to come back. So it's not a, it's not a forever thing. Mm -hmm. It's not going to actually cure me so that I can then live a normal mm -hmm. life sort of thing. You can't have kids on it or anything like that. It's not safe to fall pregnant. That's what I was so, just going to ask you. Is there a recommended time to be on it as well? Well, forever is the plan. You can be on it forever th unless you want to I have think, a family. I th uh -huh. So you need to be off it for at least six months before trying for a family. So at that point, obviously, I was younger. Me and Kyle were not planning to have a family. Mm -hmm. But I didn't like... I didn't like that I had that control on my life, I think. I didn't really like that I didn't have the freedom to just have a baby when I wanted to sort of thing. But it wasn't even that. I think it was just, what is this doing inside my body? That if I was to fall pregnant, it'd need to be aborted right away. What, I'm like, it's quite, it it's quite it's quite scary. Know? I don't know. I, I generally mm. don't know. Mm. They just said it's not safe. Like, they basically said to me, if you fall pregnant, you need to get rid of it immediately. And I'm like, right, okay, that's also terrifying. So... I, I couldn't get I wouldn't get given it if, if I wasn't on contraceptive and all that so I had to go no, through all those sort no. of tests and things like that but I ended up I, I chose to come off it and in hindsight now it's the worst thing I've done because within six months of coming off it so that was like the start of 2021 20, um, and then within six months so it kind of took me to maybe about June, July my skin just started flaring up again so I think it took six months to properly come out of my system um, and then my skin started flaring up and that's when all the highlights of my Instagram and all that were filmed. Aye. And I was just at a loss. So I was like, I've stopped this medication. 
nothing else is working for me, no diets or anything. It's COVID, I can't get a dermatology appointment. I don't know what I should physically do. Like I was, I was genuinely stuck and my skin was just getting worse and worse and worse. And there was a lot of things going on in my life at that point where mm -hmm. you know, it was just too much to deal with sort of thing. Um, and then that's when I actually went on Instagram and I said, like, if there's anyone out there that has this condition, like, what, sh what do you think I should do? Should I go down the route of using steroids? Because that is what the You're NHS desperate. tell you. Mm -hmm. uh -huh, that, mm -hmm. Or should I go back on an immunosuppressant sort of thing? And, I, and most people voted for the steroids. Did you put a vote up? Not an actual vote. vote, vote just not an actual poll. Aye, right. no, which yeah, I'm yeah. glad. But aye. I just said, like, what... Because I, I was crying in these videos. I was like, I, I remember filming it as if it was yesterday. I was like, I physically do not know what to do. Like, I am at a total loss, but I need to do something. Mm -hmm. Because if I... Like, my mental health, if I had continued the way it was, like, I don't know really what would have happened. Like, I, I just could mm -hmm. not cope with it at all. So at that point, I decided to do a thing called the Dr. Aaron regime. Right, so it's a page on Facebook. It's a thing that so many people would message me and send me, like, please try it. I've done it. My kid's done it. It's been a total miracle. And I was like, right, okay. So it's basically a compound. It's a diluted steroid mixed with a moisturiser and an antibiotic cream, right? And I take it loads of people are doing this. Loads That's of people. Why they were, loads right. of people. Like thousands and thousands of people, right, all over the world have done this regime, right? In America, Australia, everything, right? So I get... I get added into this um, like Facebook page for Dr. Aaron, right? And it's a lot of eczema, psoriasis, dermatitis sufferers that have used it. And it's just all these success stories, basically, right? So I'm reading through them. I'm speaking to people, like connecting with people and just asking them, like, what, what is the ins and outs of this? So you basically... I think... I, I can't remember how... Oh, so I think I posted in the Facebook page telling people where I'm from and they told me where the closest pharmacy was to me and the closest doctors of who does this regime, right? So it was in London, it was the closest to me, right? So it was a doctor in London that I had to phone um, and the, the chemist was in London as well, obviously. So they'd done the prescription and all that. So I phoned this doctor, he set up a Zoom call. It was £200 for a 10, mm. pound, a 10 minute consultation, right? But I'm de I was desperate. Where were they based? Where were they based? And like I know, like, no, I know your local was classed as London, I but where know. was the company actually based? Was it American, or was it? Are you going so, to tell me it's actually a not, big so scam? See, well, basically, I personally think it's a scam, right? Because it's a South, it's this South African doctor, right? He is Dr. Aaron and he claims to heal all these medical conditions, right? Is he on right? TikTok? But yeah, it's not, guy. he's an is old guy. Facebook? He's an old man. Like he's literally oh, an old man, me. right? Mm -hmm. So, but it's so all these it's all these private doctors uh -huh. that that believe in this regime, right? But they actually don't, right? Because you can go to the NHS, you can go to the doctor's surgery, especially in Scotland, and get a steroid for free over the counter. I paid two hundred pound for a consultation, right? Showed him my skin. He was like, right, okay, let me examine your skin. Based on your skin, your severity, this will determine the how much cream you have, how often you put it on, whatever, right? So. Moisturiser, antibiotic, steroid, mixed together. I was told to put it on my body four times a day and three times a day in my face, right? But if you go to any doctor or any dermatologist right now and ask them how to use a steroid, they would tell you to use it sparingly and thinningly, right? So right away, being instructed to use it four times a day in my face, it, on my body and three in my face was just mm -hmm. absolutely ridiculous, right? I was also on it for 12 months. I used this cream every day, four times a day for 12 months. How much did that cost you? I was £65 pound every two weeks for a tub. And see if you see if you needed a consultation to speak to him, if you were concerned about something, it was £100. Pound. Have you added up how much you've spent on it? Uh, no. Is there anybody anywhere talking about this? Saying no, be... because see if you mention anything in the Facebook page about steroid withdrawal, you get cut, you get kicked out right away. Aye. So this was October 2021, right, that I signed up to this regime and I thought, right, I'm going to get my life back. This is going to fix my skin. A lot of people, like, I didn't see anyone speaking negatively about it because you get kicked out if you're spoken mm. negatively about it. So mm. I didn't see anything. I trusted it. I trusted all these people. It's definitely um, a regime. Yeah, literally. A cult. Uh -huh, it is. It. That's, that's how I feel like it is. It's like a cult mm. because people just totally go against you if you say anything other than the fact that this is amazing, this cream, right? So I started using it. And I remember, this was like end of September into October. I had my cousin's wedding mid-October and my skin was completely clear, head to toe, 
completely clear. And I felt amazing. I had my makeup on, I had a nice outfit on, I felt amazing, I had my life back. That was in about two, three weeks. It had just completely cleared up. After obviously suffering for it for about six months because I came off methotrexate and it all started again, right? I sh I was totally naive. I should have known. No, but you're, you were vulnerable. But I was so you're vulnerable. Uh -huh. uh -huh. And I put my trust in this doctor because I thought and that you're, like, you're not matter. even uh -huh. but you're not I'm even a doctor. I was like, but you're you're private. You're taking people's money. Like you would actually think that by doing that, they're going to get the, to the root cause of the problem. Like they're going to do this research and they're going to look into it and they're going to really help you because. Mm -hmm. You're giving them your money, you're and they're giving you their time. That's what I felt it was going to be like, and I just I, I put all my trust in this guy, and come like so that that was October twenty twenty one. Me and Kyle bought our flat in June twenty twenty two, and we took two weeks off to paint it and all that. The whole thing needed done up, um, and in those two weeks, my skin just got so so bad right like and i mean every single day it was getting worse and worse and worse no i'm still, that, this, still, I'm still using, using this uh-huh so i use it for exactly so 12 months yeah then... so it cleared it up and then it came back 10 times worse again so this is just getting worse and worse and worse and i thought right away but see how i was feeling mm -hmm. like my skin was going into really bad sweats i was coming up and weird like purple kind of rashy lumps like my skin was just totally reacting to how it, it's never done this before right it looked different it felt different and I kind of I kind of said to myself right away I went I think I'm going through steroid control I mean I'm totally reacting to these steroids because how I feel and how my skin looks and 20 at that point 25 years of my life I had never had so in this six or eight months or whatever it was at the time of using steroids it was completely different from 25 years of my life Mm -hmm. So it was quite clear that the steroids were causing the problem, right? So I paid £100 for a consultation. I said to the guy, I went, look, I think I'm going through steroid withdrawal. I'm terrified that these steroids have damaged my skin. I don't want and to use it. And you're still using it. And you're I'm still, still using so it, So you right? can get steroid withdrawal while you're still yeah, using uh -huh. the Yes, the because thing. that's, so that's, what, people, that's <coughs> what some people say is that... <laughs> It's when, so people say that steroid withdrawal occurs when you stop using steroids, right? So then they say, well, just use them again. But it, it's it, that's not how it works. So it can, it can do that. But it also can happen whilst you're still using them. And, and it's just an adverse reaction, So that's basically. what I was just going to say. Is it your body now rejecting it? Exactly. So if your body Literally, rejects it, you're going to yeah. suffer. Well, put it this way, right? If you, like, if you have burnt skin and you put it in a fire... It's just gonna keep burning. It's not gonna get any better. That's mm -hmm. literally what like the, the the steroids had damaged my skin so much that then putting that on, it's just gonna damage it damage more and it, more. Aye. So it literally went like my skin barrier mm -hmm. was completely okay. non-existent. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like I had like if you think of your skin being layers, all my layers were just stripped right back, and my whole body was reacting. So obviously anything you put on your skin, it absorbs into your system, and that's why when you go through steroid withdrawal, you are genuinely so unwell from the inside out because I lost over two stone in weight I did not sleep for six months I lost all my brows I lost all my lashes my hairline receded um, I had severe shaking and I think that's why I lost so much weight because I, I was what was I I was nine stone twelve at my heaviest mm -hmm. and going whilst I was going through steroids withdrawal I went down to seven stone three and which was uh, I'm five foot eight I, mm -hmm. or five foot seven I think so mm -hmm. I just, it was not all weight that I could afford to lose, right? But I'll, I'll admit that even Kyle says that like, my diet didn't really change that much because I was so depressed in the actual s time of going through steroids withdrawal that I just ate crap or whatever. So, but so I so that so the June twenty twenty two when I had this so consultation, that I know, I know, that. and do you know, so, what? it's so long that this is just goes up and down, right? So I told the guy, I went, I'm going through steroids withdrawal. I went, I don't want to use this. I went, it's causing me serious damage. And he went, no, no. He went, I promise you, you're not going through steroid withdrawal. That is literally what he promised me. I was not going through this steroid withdrawal. And he said that you just need a bit of a stronger one. He went, use it oh for X God. amount and taper down, right? So that's, that's what the rule is. You use it four times a day. You taper down over weeks to the point where you only need to use the cream once a week, right? But the minute I started tapering down, my skin would just get worse. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? That's, that's mm -hmm. exactly what would happen. So I then stupidly trusted this guy again. I thought... Well, must know what the hell he's talking about right again naive desperate whatever um so then from the june 2022 to october 2022 i kept using it um and then it came the october that's when i was just at my all-time low my skin was honestly 
horrific that I said to myself, no, I was like, I need to come off this. So I literally just stopped paying the guy, stopped ordering my prescriptions and I binned the cream. Like overnight and that was it, I just stopped. And then within weeks I went out of steroid control properly. See the whole cling film thing, what, what was that? What were you doing? So I, see because your skin is so dry, like my skin was so dry, um, a lot of people, basically when you're going through steroid control, right, a right, you're itching, say, and I've noticed you doing that. I is know, your skin no, no, no. Right. It's, it's a nervous? habit. It's a habit. <laughs> right, okay. It's terrible. I just, I just scratch all the time. My mom says actually, like, why are you scratching? I'm, I don't even know. It's just that I think it's a tick or something uh, like that. Right, right. Um, Sorry, but no, I know. No, but I'm glad because I'm, I'm, I'm glad, glad because it then but, makes me stop. It makes me stop uh, doing right, it. Okay. Um, but no, it's what did you ask me there? Because I've totally went off her. Um, what did I say? What did I ask you? The cling film. Oh, I right, was okay. I uh-huh. about that because that is so, that video alone is just so powerful and so, it is heartbreaking to right. watch. So it's basically just you. So from my point of view, just seeing yeah. so everybody knows, although they'll see it, I'm sure it's pinned to your TikTok or uh-huh. yeah, yeah, I'm a TikTok So um, more, you're so. You're sitting totally aye. covered. It wrapped yourself up in cling film. Aye. So basically, my thought was, right, so. TikTok is now where I predominantly post all my stuff, right? Purely because yeah. there's such a massive steroid yeah. control community on that, right? Uh-huh. An unbelievable Good, amount, of, honestly, an unbelievable amount of people all over the world are going through this, right? A lot of people swear by no moisture treatment, right? So if you've ever seen NMT, that's what they mean. There's mm-hmm. no moisture treatment, mm-hmm. right? Because the more cream you put on when you're going through steroid control, you might notice you can get a thing called like red sleeve which your whole body just goes bright red and reacts to any cream that you put on. So basically... Mm-hmm. Now, bearing in mind, this isn't a diagnosis of steroid withdrawal. No doctor or dermatologist will confirm that you have this, right? Because they're probably petrified that... Terrified they'll get sued. Oh, right, Like, okay. probably, like, if I... Like, my dermatologist has laughed at me. Like, when I go and get my bloods done, they just laugh when they say... Uh, when I tell them that I went through steroid withdrawal. They just do not believe Why? me. Why? Why is it such Don't believe a... Me. They, 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 just, they just are not willing to accept that steroids have caused this damage. They just mm-hmm. honestly, they will not, because I've, I've had my prescriptions written to me that she will not use steroids, have advice, but she just won't do it. Like, literally, that is, says it on a letter to that the doctor. That is crazy. I know, it's mental. So, the no moisture treatment just did not work for me, right? Because in the six months, so I obviously in October 2022, when I decided to stop using the steroids, I phoned in sick to my work and I just said, look, I'm going to be off long term here. I went, I need to get to the bottom of this skin issue. Bearing in mind the worst my skin was getting, I couldn't even I couldn't even turn my neck. I couldn't get out of bed, couldn't Your shiver. My skin was, was falling off. Aye, it was literally it was, head to toe. Aye. Right, head to toe. Like you could see all my veins. Like as I said, I had lost <sighs> so much weight. I had lymph all well, my lymph nodes were all swollen. It was just horrible, right? Um so when I woke up in the morning, that was the hardest part of the day, right? Was you were covered head to toe in skin. Right. I mean the bed was covered in dry skin, right? It was just disgusting. Um and I would immediately go into a bath of dead sea salts because that's the only thing that would soothe my skin. And it was like the only period of time while I was lying in a bath that I wasn't at myself, like clone myself. Mm-hmm. Um but the minute you come out of the bath and the minute I was to put any sort of cream on or parathin or anything, see within about ten minutes, you're flaking again. Like that is how dry you are. That like, honestly, like I could literally just sat and peeled. You're just losing your like, just, skin. Uh-huh, there's mm. just like nothing would absorb into your skin. It would. Mm-hmm. It's like putting cream on a bit of sandpaper. It would just sit there. It wouldn't. It wouldn't soak in. Mm-hmm. That's exactly what it was doing to my skin. So, I would try and put bandages on to try and one to stop myself from scratching and to hopefully let the cream absorb more into my skin. But it would actually just transfer onto the bandages instead. So my mum suggested, why don't you try cling film? And I was mm. like, right, okay. Um, and it's controversial on TikTok, right? Some people are for it and some people are against it, depending on how they feel. But because steroid withdrawal is, you know, no one talks about it in the medical community. So it's like, it's just us that know things and it's us that help each other and nothing's set in stone of what does work and what doesn't. Mm. It's just people's mm-hmm. opinions, mm-hmm. do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And you kind of just need to go with what works. And that whole thing of uh-huh. what like works the no moisture treatment. Uh-huh, totally. Because totally. the no moisture, moisture treatment did not work for me at all. Whereas you've got people that have done no moisture treatment for, say, a year. Like, they've not put any creams on their skin and you can see their skin healing. Like, their skin so barrier nothing, is building back just, up. Just, mm-hmm. they, they use nothing. Absolutely nothing on their skin. So, did you just put cling film on? You didn't I put actually... paraffin on. So, right. I put, like, a really greasy... Like it's got fifty fifty eye basically basically uh-huh. I have Vaseline. Put that on, wrapped myself in cling film and it actually allowed my skin to 
absorb the cream because when I done that, so I done that for about a month. So it, it did work, yeah, hundred percent. It worked. It it, mm -hmm. it allowed it to soak into my skin because when I was taking the cling film off, maybe I done that like maybe two or three times a day. But I think so, what that video does to see a grown woman sitting wrapped in cling. I mean, you were in tears as well. <laughs> oh, I think just, it just shows I know. how desperate, desperate that situation I know, but was. At, at that point as well, I had God to move back you. in with my mum. Like I had mm -hmm. to move out my flat. Like Kyle. I was literally in bed all day, every day, like, didn't see the light of day or anything, right? Unless I was in the hospital, that was the only time I left the house, right? Did not leave the house. So the house was a riot because Kyle was looking after a puppy, working full time, playing football, looking after me, stressed about me. Like, as much as steroid control impacted my life massively, it had an equal effect on him. And I think... How did you survive that? I don't know. Yeah. See, looking mm -hmm. back, I don't know, because, well, it got to the point where my mum and dad said, look, look, you need to move home, like, you can't look after yourself, because the hospital did say to me, some GPs were good, some GPs were quite bad, right, so there was one particular GP that I met up in Cumberland Old, mm -hmm. and she looked to me and went, why are you here? She went, why are you not in hospital? She went, you are a state, she went, you can barely walk, you can, do you know what I mean, I was just a mess, Physically and mentally, right? And it's the only doctor that's actually acknowledged how bad, what I, it, was. How bad it was there and mm -hmm. then, right? So she said to me, she went, look, she went, the hospital probably isn't the best place for you because you're so prone to infection because my skin was just open everywhere. And were you getting loads so, of infections as well? I, I did get loads of infections, but it was only like, um, what do you call that again? There was a certain infection that I got like two or three times. It begins with an F, can't remember what it is. That it was just when my skin would just break out in all these horrible lumps, but... Nothing ever too serious that it was anything mm -hmm. that I needed like medical attention for anything. But um, the doctor said to me, like, you'd need 24 hour care. So if you can live with your mum, I would do that sort of thing. And I was dead upset because I was like, I, I just didn't want that to happen. I was like, how the hell am I at this phase of my life where, you know, I was 26. I just moved out with my boyfriend and I'm now having to be bed bound, getting looked after by my mum. Do you know what I mean? With no end in sight, bearing in the mind of if this is ever going to end or if this is ever going to get better. So I ended up, I moved out at my mum's house um, last January, January 2023, and I stayed there until the end of February, and that was when I'd done the cling film and all that, and mm -hmm. um, at this point I was on methotrexate again, so when was I stopped... that one of the it, things you did to try and help it? Aye, 100%, because I had to, like, that, so this was October 2022 when I stopped the steroids, I started methotrexate in December, but only because my brother was getting married in the May, and I was a bridesmaid, so it was like, a, I had to be better. Otherwise, mm -hmm. I couldn't go. There was no mm -hmm. way I could have got a dress on, makeup on, walked down the aisle as a bridesmaid. Like, that was just so far out of reach for me. Yeah. Um, and I just said to the doctor, like, there and then, I was like, I need, I, was like, I need an immunosuppressant. I went, and I need to do it quick. I says, because I've got an end date in, in mind. And to be fair, the hospital were really good. Like, the nurses were lovely. The dermatologist, not so much, because whilst waiting for methotrexate to kick in, she kept trying to get me to use steroids. Mm -hmm. Um, and I just said to her, look, and I was quite patronising at some point, right, because I was so fed up at this mm -hmm. point, like I was mentally exhausted, right, and I just said to her, I was like, I am living proof sitting right in front of you of the damage that steroids can do. I mean, I've had this condition for 26 years of my life, and in the 12 months of using steroids, this is what's happened. Like, I'm literally in front of you, but use me as research, look into it, like, mm -hmm. be a medical marvel in your field and do mm -hmm. something that, like, help, mm -hmm. help these people because it would be a total breakthrough because no one else is doing it. Mm -hmm. And she just wasn't <laughs> interested, just <laughs> not interested insane. at all. So, I know. Mm -hmm. So, I didn't obviously use them. Um, and I, I let the methotrexates, you know, obviously get back into my system, but it didn't, it didn't work as quickly as what it did the first time round because... It was treating steroid withdrawal, it wasn't just treating eczema. Mm -hmm. And my skin was just so damaged. So although I started that in December, even by February when I was in my mum's house, it was still, if not, my skin probably had got worse before it got better sort of thing. Um, and I, it was just, I didn't realise now, I, I realised now, but I didn't at the time, how much it had affected me mentally and all that, because it's not until when it came to my brother's wedding that I could actually go out and socialise and live life again that I was terrified like absolutely terrified like so much so that even now if I go meet friends for a coffee or whatever like I panic I'm like what do I talk about like because I'm not 
like especially then I had been trapped in four walls for six months trapped in my own mind and physically trapped because I couldn't move right and I just went through the same mind frame every day of I can't do this anymore that that's all that went through my head all day every day was I can't do this I cannot survive mm. this like my life is not worth living if this is what it's going to be like I didn't think of anything else outside of that so to go from one extreme to then being able to live my life again and and it, it was like a lockdown ending but in my mind mm -hmm. and just going out and, and in public again I was like well, what do I talk about because I don't have any stories to tell I mean, I've not been anywhere in six months I've not done anything in six months I, do you know what I mean and it's almost like steroid to straw it's almost like you feel like you're trying to convince people of your illness because it's not registered as a condition in the NHS do you know what I mean like no one knows about it unless you've been through it so I think that's why the community on TikTok are so loud about it now because there's far too many people in the world that have are now going through it that they can't actually be ignored which is, ter which is terrifying but it's good as well because there's now people like you that know about it which would never have known about mm -hmm. it before and it sets up things like this do you know what I mean it's, mm -hmm. it's just it's mad it's mad the whole thing but it's I mean it's making me think of women's hormones because obviously I've been banging on about that and you know the uh, lack of fo what's the word investment and it's very similar like you know yeah and I'm actually wondering if there's hot a, a hormone 100, yeah, issue uh -huh, there 100%, as well because you know you're 18 yeah. and whatever yeah. and it's it just lots of it I'm horrified at the yeah. way you've been I just can't believe that's what happens when you've got a skin condition I know. like but at the same time, I'm not because I'm thinking this is like women go, that have got hormone issues yeah. you can't get. There's it's no, just another no. yeah. thing uh -huh. that we're having to deal with. I know skin yeah. conditions aren't like no, but you know, it just shows you, like, women. Uh -huh, but, but you know uh -huh. when something's actually mentally killing yeah. you, mm -hmm. you can't get any help. You can't get know, any support. And, and you haven't is... to self advocate. You haven't yeah. to do all your own research, which means you're ending up going to cowboys exactly. that's the only way i uh -huh. can put it exactly. but um, i mean it frightens me that this group the things that get pulled down on social media versus the things I know. that don't, don't. I, I, know. Am I know you wonder don't that, you? that that this group's allowed to exist how's it not being reported i, don't know. I have no it? idea and see the sad thing about it is it's like there's like six month old babies on that God. that are using this and it just, honestly like steroids are just so so potent I would never in a million years. Like, I class myself quite lucky that, like I, I am like a guinea pig. I feel right. Like I, I don't shy away for trying anything. Right. I didn't mm -hmm. want to use steroids, but mm -hmm. see anything else mm -hmm. in general, I'll try it. See if it doesn't work for me. It doesn't work for me. See if it makes me flare up. Makes me flare up. I'll go over it, sort of thing. So I've always been quite open on TikTok of just trying new things and and seeing what's kind of happening and all that. But even just like my skin couldn't bear it. So a six month old child that's going to just keep getting damaged to then they're not going to actually even get to live a normal skin life because it's going to always be damaged for mm -hmm. the get-go, do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And mm -hmm. I just don't get mm -hmm. how, like, fair enough, i done it, do you know what I mean? I signed up to it and I paid for it and whatever, but he's literally just giving you something that you can get for free off the doctor. And he's making £65 every two weeks off people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How is that so stupid? Yeah, but, no, but, they're, but they're, how though? How how did I know? They're on vulnerable people I know. like you. They're they're making but it look I like know. they do something special I because know. they know how desperate you are. And that baby's mum and those that? baby's mums are and exactly they, the I same know. as well because you have a baby. You, you and they want don't they won't know anything. No, they won't know anything about that. steroid withdrawal, which is terrifying as well mm. because, like as I said, I feel like I'm lucky that if I, I don't believe eczema is a genetic thing, right? I generally believe it is a gut issue I think that there's foods that I'm eating that my body cannot break down it causes toxins to come out my skin and it causes inflammation but I, you that's don't how know I what believe. it is but do I don't you know? know I don't mm. know like so I did do a gluten free diet I did do dairy free diet for like six months at a time or maybe three months at a time whatever and my skin would maybe be a bit better some days but it, it maybe wasn't long enough to have a full extent of actually healing and getting a lot better having taken those foods out of my diet but there are certain foods that I notice that I'll eat and right away I'll be quite itchy like what? and things so Pretty like tomato based stuff right, for whatever uh, reason so uh -huh. I love 
like bolognese, chili, mm -hmm. all that sort of thing. Pizza, mm -hmm. I love all that. Selenium, is that um, tomatoes? Is that? I have no idea. No, right. I, I generally yeah. don't know. I, I don't know <clears throat> the actual thing that would be in it, but dairy as well. Like I and gluten like i i, I eat a lot of bread <laughs> i eat a lot of bread i eat a lot of bread, eat a lot of pastries <coughs> I, lo like, I love pancakes i love croissants i love anything pardon me that bloody coffee's coming back to me i just love anything gluten love it and dairy Stodge. and i i do i've got i've got a very beige is, that's the thing i've got a very beige diet so i don't eat a lot of veg or fruit or anything do you I don't, even do you, try to help your skin no <laughs> <laughs> which is so bad right it is so bad because people are like well if you're that sore like how do you know but obviously what i'm treating now is is and this is what i'm trying to say is it's steroid withdrawal right uh -huh. i've damaged my skin yeah. with steroids mm -hmm. so see people commenting on my tiktok saying drink more water oh. uh, try and eat this try and eat that i'm like that might work for eczema I went, but I don't have eczema anymore. Mm -hmm. I went, my skin is just, that's the only way I can explain it is as a burn victim. You, that's, because that's what the hospital yeah. were treating me for yeah. when I that's was in. That's what it looks like. When yeah. I first saw your videos, yeah. I thought something terrible yeah. had happened. Because people call it. Uh -huh. People uh -huh. are like, what the hell has happened to you? Like people thought, like people, I've asked if I've been in a fire before. Um, so it was someone else asked me something else. And I was like, what are you talking about? Like they thought I was in like a car crash that's caused like, Pet, like, pet, but that I don't is know, how powerful it's just mad. your videos well, are. I, I don't even know if you appreciate no, how, I know, how I don't powerful think I do. they are when you see them. Because honestly, the, the, I, I had those thoughts as well. Like, what has happened to this last night? But see now, like, see when I look back at my TikTok, like, I feel like I'm happy that I shared it, but I'm actually annoyed at myself that I didn't share more because. I, I remember that there was looking so back, much more. there was so much more, and I wish I had filmed what it was like every single day because no one would believe no one would believe it at all and and that's why when it comes to talking to friends and family now about how much kyle suffered as much as me you you honestly wouldn't believe like it was horrendous for him like I, like mm -hmm. one looking at someone you love in complete agony mm -hmm. and well, not having thinking... the support yeah. do you know what i mean like, i didn't have a doctor to turn to I didn't have, like, put it this way, right? If you're diagnosed with, I don't know, a cancer or diabetes or something, mm. there's 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 a plan in place. You hope that there, there, there's a route that you hopefully can go down and get some sort of help. With steroid withdrawal, you're completely helpless. You go to the doctor, you tell them what's wrong with you, and they just say no, and you're left. You're on left your on your own. There's mm -hmm. nothing they'll do to help you, apart from give you steroids. There's nothing they'll say. That on there's generally nothing. So being in that being in that estate with poor mental health and having no hope for the future of what your skin is going to be like was just far too much for me to handle. Like I, I could not so much so that when I woke up, the last thing I wanted to do was look at my phone. So although in my videos most of them i am crying or i'm upset or i'm really down that was actually the good days because i could actually pick up my phone mm -hmm. and film and share it every other day i, I couldn't even do that because there was days that before i moved in with my mom and dad they would phone me 13 times and i would not answer it and they would rattle my door down and all that because they were petrified like i, I did not speak to anybody in the six months that i was not well i did not see anybody um there was like one particular night that I was at when I stayed at my mum's that nearly every family member came up to see me. Um, like my grandparents were there, my cousins were there, my auntie was there. And it was the first time in that period of my life of being really not well that I had actually spent any time with other people. And it was almost like a, a slight lift of like, because my life wasn't going on. I was looking outside the window and watching people go by and living their life. And I was in a standstill for six months and I felt that way every single day and it wasn't until I was in their company that I realised like life is actually going on out there and maybe things will be alright and that that could be me again because the whole world had just stopped for me when I was when I was feeling the way I was feeling and it was almost just a sense of realisation that maybe gave me a wee bit of a lift that you know I will get through this and I'll you know I'll, I need to do something to actually help myself here because in comparison to who I was then food just any other time in my life like I'm chatty I'm loud I'm 
mental. Some people's classmates mental, right? I'm just so far away from myself now, it's unbelievable. Like I, like, and that's what I'm saying when I didn't realise how much it had an effect on my mental health. It's what it did when I was better and I was able to go out and live my life again because I realised that I, I, I don't want to go out there. Like I can, I don't, I don't know what to do. And I had never ever suffered from mental health before in my life or anxiety or anything. I class myself, I was lucky. I used to speak about it all the time. Like I knew people that did and naively I didn't understand it because I hadn't been through it. And I always thought that something really bad in your life would need to happen for you to suffer with mental health. And fair enough, something bad did happen in my life, but it it was bad to me, it wasn't it? Maybe it wasn't bad to everyone else to to realise the extent of then how it left me feeling, sort of thing. Do you get oh, what I, I mean? But, I do get it, because <laughs> anybody that's had even bad skin, I mean, I've had acne when I was a teenager, and I think how badly that affected me. Yeah. Something so trivial. Yeah. You know, now that, I can that so that, many people that go that through as well. Yeah. But loads of people, I say it's trivial, but it's no, because if you've got it, it's it has a massive, yeah. it did be me anyway, and most people yeah. that I know that talk about it has a massive impact on your yeah. mental health. So for you to be, like, I don't think it's true. I, I can't believe you're still able to sit here I and know. talk. I mean, I, I think you're absolutely amazing, oh. and I truly mean that. Oh. Like, the strength that you must have had to, cut, to pull through that, to, to find it within yourself, because that's what you've done. You've just sat there and told yeah. me, that you just thought, I've got to do something about this, I've got yeah. to get myself out there. There's not a lot of people can do that. I know. See, I, I'm actually, I'm grateful that my brother's wedding was when it was, because that was very much something ahead of me that I can I could look forward to and hold on to. But mm -hmm. there was so many days that I would cry thinking, I am, I'm not going to get to see my brother get married. Like, I'm not going to be there. There's no way. Like, because honestly, when I say, like, I could not open my mouth to brush my teeth. Like, it I could not you open my mouth. I, I the, could not, honestly, like the the, the the and this is the thing. It's like what steroids actually do to you is unbelievable. The damage that, that, that it actually does to mm -hmm. a person. So how the NHS have not caught on to that, or maybe they have caught on to it, and they're just choosing to ignore it. I don't know, right? But when it came to my brother's weight, I, I was glad now in hindsight, looking back, because it did give me something to hold on to, mm -hmm. and it gave me. It did put a lot of pressure on me, and I think that's probably why my mental health was maybe even worse than what it could have been because I, I panicked every day. I was like, I'm not getting any better here, and it, don't get me wrong, Methotrex, it ended up, it hit me quite hard, it hit me quite quickly, and once it was really in my system, like the end of March and April, that's when my skin started really, really clean. So you've been on this recovery uh -huh, for, for a year? Just over a year now, yeah, yeah right. just over a year. And that um, has been the beginning at the Hi. end of that horrendous period oh yeah and you'll continue now on that yeah. unless you decide to start a family yeah and, 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 an egg. Uh -huh. but, hmm. and that's a terrifying thing it's that selfishly i could not put myself through that again and i know for a fact if i come off methotrexate my skin might go back to the way it was it probably will i'm hoping that my skin will heal itself underneath methotrexate over years do you know what i mean yeah. so yeah. i'm hoping that underneath the methotrexate my skin can start building itself up again, my barrier gets stronger and it's maybe just not as damaged. But obviously the first time I came off Methotrexy, I was on it for three years and within six months my skin went back to the way it was. So now that my skin's worse this time, I'm like, what's going to happen when I come off it this time around? So annoyingly, the thought of coming off it is terrifying, but ultimately me and Kyle would love to have a family. So it's then, it's then the pressure on myself of, when do I do it? How do I do it? How will I feel doing it? Do I just need to put myself through feeling that way again in the hopes of falling pregnant and having a baby? Like, this is the thing. It's like, with my mental health now and getting, like, paying for therapy and all that and doing everything that I do on TikTok and then thinking about my future plans, like, this was all caused by a steroid. A steroid cream that could have been given to me for free over the counter with no instruction of how to use it. And it has affected this many years of my life and it will affect me forever because I'm on an immunosuppressant for the rest of my life because of this cream a wee stupid tube of cream that I could have been advised a man on a Facebook page 
that's getting well, away a, doc- a doctor mm-hmm. that's living it up in London, probably making a fortune. Do you know what I mean? Like you've made, I don't even know, I don't even want to calculate how much he made off me in a 12 mm-hmm. month period, but it's just, it's just mad, but it's genuinely like, I'm quite, I'm obviously not glad it's happened to me, right? I'm absolutely gutted it's happened to me because it's changed, it's changed my appearance in regards to like my skin is a lot more wrinkled than what it should be and my hair like just recently going into the hairdressers my hairdresser's been like oh god I can see hair growth again and just like it's just sad that that happened to me and like without drawing my brows in I've still got bald patches everywhere and thankfully my lashes have only just started growing back and things like that but it's part of it's I'm glad how it changed me because it's shaped who you are as a human. Aye, a hundred percent. Sadly, yeah, it's it, it totally extremely, has. It is so depressing and horrifying. Yeah, what you had to go through. Yeah, for, no, you come out with that. Yeah, you know, it's changed as a human. Oh, great! You know, yeah. you were a wonderful human yeah. anyway. Ugh. But I mean, I know you've got to try. And yeah, you've seen I, some I, I, sort I of do. Light. Uh-huh, exactly, and I just, I just think that like the things that mean a lot to me now or like I, I mean I don't know like even just being a young girl like teenager into being a young adult and stuff like that like you can imagine how bitchy and everything it can be right like friendships break down and just it could just be quite toxic living in this world right, as, yeah. a, a, as a young girl yep, uh-huh. it, it's totally toxic uh-huh. and you know I fell out with friends over the years and there's like I don't know there's just certain things that have happened in my life that I feel now I would have reacted to completely differently and I think it's just gave me total insight of what actually matters in your life because when I was so low do you know what I mean like as much as I was so damaged physically from the steroids it was the mental health that was going to kill me mm-hmm. and I as I said I had never suffered with that before ever I would probably people would look at me and think I was the most confident person in the room like I would go up to the smithy with my pals they would go up to the bar and I'd go straight up and put my name in karaoke haven't even had a drink because I just loved being on karaoke. I didn't, and, and at that point, I still had eczema. I was still going through, you know, bad skin and people had already saw me on Instagram and things that I posted and people would come up to me and be like, oh, it's so inspiring what you post and all that. And I never shied away from it. Like my skin condition, after posting online about it, I very quickly became quite confident in a, of like a kind of frame of, this is who I am. I can't do anything about it. Like I can't hide it because it's my skin, fuck's sake. It's all over me head to toe. I can't hide it. There's nothing I can do about it. I can't get it better. So I, I, just, I may as well just live with it and, and hope that it will get better. And obviously posting on Instagram, it kind of allowed me to do that. But now having the bigger impact on my mental health with going through steroid control, I would never dream. I don't even go to the pub with my pals. <laughs> never mind going up and karaoke. I just wouldn't do it. Because it's just, the, the thought is just terrifying to me. I don't know why. But even like if I was to go to the shops, like I pray that I don't see someone I know. Is that because, why you're now doing therapy? Is this part yeah, of it? Yeah, aye. So you've only been doing therapy for a couple of months. What made you go? go what was the deciding factor in that? So I think because when I wasn't well, I kept saying to myself, my God, like when, the minute my skin's better, and I'm going to be so grateful. I'm going to be so happy that I can wake up and not think about my skin. You know, like I can't imagine that a normal person actually just wakes up and doesn't think about their skin. Like, I can't believe that. Like when I first wake up, I think, right, what's sore? Where have I got a cut? What's going mm-hmm. to sting when I go into the shower? That's just my everyday thought. So I just thought that when I can do daily things that people take for granted, rightly so, like fucking brushing your hair without it being painful, brushing your teeth without your lips bursting open, going for a shower without screaming in agony. When I can do all those things again, I'll be so grateful to just live my life as a normal human, just, you know, going about my wee world that like I'm the main character energy. And it's just, <laughs> it's actually just fun living life. Do you know what I mean? We, you don't need to have exciting plans. I don't but know just, if Andy feels like that. I know, I know what but, you mean. but I felt like, I felt like my life had gotten so simple mm-hmm. that it is those little things that you do day to day that makes the world it's go around. giving you such you know an I mean? appreciation uh-huh. of It totally has, it totally has. But then when it came to feeling better, and being able to do all those things, I was terrified to do it. And I was like, what the hell's going on? I put so much pressure on myself that the minute my skin was better, I would be better. And that just wasn't the case. So I realised that how much my mental health had affected me. And I tried to, you know, deal with it on my own. But I think a lot of things that have happened in my life, on top of steroid withdrawal, 
has ultimately changed me as a person and it has been pretty much since like covid that you know stuff has just happened to me like between like my my friendships family issues things with my boyfriend my skin all these things like stress mm -hmm. with jobs because of my skin like just so much happened to me in such a small period of time that I was just constantly getting knocked back and knocked back without being able to pick myself up again and it was just there was only so much I could take and I think now that I'm in a place of recovery and like physical health mental health this was like the time where I realized like I, I need to do something about this otherwise it's going to eat me alive and it was just getting back to normal stuff. Uh -huh. You realised that you weren't able to do it, yeah. so you're now getting therapy. Like, I, uh -huh. like, so you're now paying for yeah. therapy, so that's another additional uh, yeah. cost onto the cost of the whole, yeah. the cost of this happening. Oh, like, the financial impact that eczema alone, and not even stereo withdrawal, but eczema alone has had on me. Like, I'm talking maxed out credit cards and all that, solely on treatments like therapy like skincare like you think like this the skincare i use even now i'm probably about 150 pound a month i was going to ask skincare. you that there's a couple of things i want to ask you i so, wanted to make sure we asked about the therapy as well and you've explained that mm -hmm. like it's had that much of an impact on you on you that just normal life you need therapy on now. oh yeah it just Aye. going back to normal Aye. life but what do you use on your skin? Because I know there'll be loads of people wanting to know so, that. Because your skin does look amazing. Uh, You're so, wearing yeah, makeup. Like I mean, my, I can't see yeah, your whole body, My obviously. skin is, like, it is, but like, you, you'll notice, this, right? So you'll notice that I do which, have a lot, I mean, you'll probably you probably know what you see on, like, maybe I've, got, chilly. I've got a lot of scarring, right? You can see, I've got oh, a lot I of scars, see right? Let's see, or so you have. Do you know what I mean? Like, I've got everywhere. And you can see your skin is a wee bit dry. And, like, I've got, like, you know, like, I've scars got loads of scars, right? Yeah, loads and that. loads of scars, right? Loads of cuts and stuff like that still. But I use very recently, like, so as I said, I'm, I'm a total guinea pig. I don't shy away from skincare and all that. Like, I'll use, because I, before eczema controlled my life as much as it did, I would love to sit down over a weekend and do my, like, I would spend hours doing my makeup after watching YouTube videos and all that, like Jamie Genevieve and all mm. that. Like, I totally loved all that. I've always been a very girly girl quite tomboyish but I get like because I, I love the football I go to football every weekend with my, my dad and whatever um, and that's just the kind of life that I, I, I just love that right I, Kyle yeah. always says that he's like that's why I liked you when I first met you because you were a girly girl but you can have a laugh with you and on I was like alright cheers I was like, like you just that's just how we kind of gel but um, I it's just I, I kind of go through the phases so depending on what my skin feels like will depend on what I use right mm -hmm. But right now, like this is only very recently, like the last month or something, I've been using the Hada Labo products. Right. The Japanese brand. Have mm -hmm. you ever heard of it? I think I might have seen it on so, TikTok at Rings uh, Bell. Weirdly, they actually just had an event in the Corinthian in Glasgow the other day. Maybe it, was um, that that it I've might seen it then. might be because see, I, I seen it, I thought I wish I, I had went to that. <laughs> so all the influencers there and all that and I was a bit do you know, it's actually amazing skincare. Like it is amazing. Is it expensive? So my yes. Mm -hmm. So, like the hyaluron, the hyaluronic acid lotion alone is like, I'm sure it's like twenty seven pound or something like that. I don't know. But and you put it on your face or mm -hmm. just your face? Yeah. So that? my my full my full face routine, like morning and night, is re uh, recently it's been had a labo products. Um, I also use some Caudalie products, um, mm -hmm. which I'm sure you know are, are expensive, like. No, I don't. See, do I don't not? know a lot about oh, skincare because I'm quite a basic person now Are when you? it comes to that. Um... Right, okay, so I use, right, so Hadalabo, Caudalie, um, and Sculpted by Amy. Right, right that's the okay. three brands that I swear by for everyday use, for just how I feel every day if I can do my makeup and all that, whatever. Pardon me, this coffee's killing my chest. I will use Balmain's or Fat Cow skincare mm -hmm. if. My skin is really dry, flaring up because they're more like greasy ointment sort of thing. Mm. So that is literally just what I've been using. But when see if like, see if for example today when I got out the shower, like my skin, like you can feel my skin, like my skin is not like no, I it's not smooth, like but it's not, eyes, quite, not dry, right? Eye. So, but I mean to me that's really good skin. Like obviously to other people it might be quite dry, right? But I'm more than happy with that. So. I just tend to leave it because sometimes if I was to then put cream on my skin, it would just get really itchy because it still wouldn't absorb and things like that. So if I can get away with just not putting anything on, I won't. Mm -hmm. 
but I'll always do my skincare my face, so I just like cleanse, tone, moisturize, whatever. And what do you use? Cleanse, tones, tone, so moisturize. So I all had all had a label. Right, so on I your like face, uh -huh, right. So I use had a label cleanser. Um, I then use their hyaluronic acid. I use the Caudalie serum, um, and then. I use a sculpted by Amy cream and just it there it, it has like and that's a, all fine that's been oh, good so, for uh -huh, you. yeah right. so the sculpted by Amy that's an Irish brand um mm -hmm. and I, I don't don't quote me on this but I'm sure she grew up with eczema and really struggled to find makeup and skincare that worked for her and it was actually someone that recommended it to me when I was posting on Instagram a, a few mm -hmm. years ago about my skin mm -hmm. um and I now use like most of my makeup so sculpted by Amy so that's the makeup, yeah, that was my next question, so yeah. that's the, the foundation mm -hmm. and everything, because your makeup's beautiful. Yeah, oh thank you, mm -hmm. oh, thank you. Um, but I, is she, that brand alone is amazing, she does skincare, makeup, fake tan, um, fake tan's not something I've ever, ever used, I've never delved into fake tan, because it's just, I just knew if they'd been young, it just wouldn't work for me, and I think that's probably why I did start using sunbeds mm -hmm. and things like that, but... Do you still use a sunbed to your skin? No. Yeah, but only recently, um... Because obviously before I wouldn't have been able to handle the heat and things like that. Um, it would have just killed my skin. But sunbeds have always been, they've always been really helpful for me. To be fair, and I'm I'm quite lucky that in my childhood, like I I would go on holiday every summer and sometimes October week and all that as well. Like me and Anthony, my brother, were very fortunate as children. We always got on holiday and things like that, mm -hmm. and because of that, I always had a kind of base tan. So I've always I've always took a tan really well in the sun despite my skin condition, which is which is quite weird. But when I would go on holiday, I'd be like a completely different person. Like people, my everyone used to call me a pint of Guinness because my skin would go really brown, and my hair would go really white, mm -hmm. right? So it it was just the sun and the salt water would just do so many good things for my skin that my skin would just always clear up and always be really good. So I don't know if as a child when I was seeing like when I was in high school and like a young adult. Because I was going on holiday so often with my family and then just looking after my skin generally. I don't know if that's why my skin just wasn't really that bad. And obviously at that point I didn't really have much stress or anything in my life. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't until after that when I got a wee bit older that it obviously kind of just took a turn. But that's why the pigmentation marks were so prominent because I was going on holiday quite often. I was using sunbeds and, you know, I was like, what the hell is going on? It was just so weird. It was just pigmentation. Like I think it's hyper. Hyper to hyper, yeah, I can't remember. Got it. Wait, yeah, it's quite uh, a common, it's quite a common thing. Yeah. It so it was, uh, it was weird, but uh, the whole thing. So what about vitamin D? What's the time? We're just over an hour. Yeah. I don't have much more to ask. Oh, no, I promise. Do, have you tried taking vitamin D if the sun helps, or is that not uh, really? Uh, I but right. So this is the thing with me, right? It's like I, I'll buy something, right, and then it'll just sit in my cupboard. And I think that if I bought it, I've, <laughs> made, ticked, the I, I've, I've ticked the box, right? I've made the effort <laughs> and it's so stupid, right? Because the amount of things that I buy, like I'll buy makeup and I'll be like, oh, that'll be really nice and uh, that'll be really good for my skin and all that, I just won't use it. And I'm like, why did I do that to myself? I don't know. So I, I bought vitamin D, vitamin C. My, I take magnesium, to be fair, for anxiety. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, that's meant to be good for anxiety. Yeah, I don't I'll know. Take that. Do you? Yeah. And do you think it helps? I've not taken it long term. Uh, so I, I don't, don't know. know. I don't know. But like for my age as well, right. being you know in the perimenopause stage, it's recommended for that as well. Oh, is that right? Okay. Um, well, for the anxiety. Right. So. I don't know, because I suffer really bad with anxiety as well. Do but you? I just See, I've never, uh, I've no, never known God, that. I, I, since childhood as really? well. Really? And is there, like, is there like certain... Is there it's certain... the stupidest things. Right. It's the stupidest things that affect me just... Um... So is it like, is it social anxiety or is it more no, it's like really being critical on yourself? Is it more self-critical? Is it? Right. And it's, it could be things like, you know, a sentence that I said that I should... I, I used and to do it for I used to do it with getting a lift. Yeah. But I think now, because I'm so far down the line aye. with that, and people do actually who watch it generally they know like, me. Ah, yeah, so exactly. it's like, yeah, I so know that people are not going to take yeah. it in any other but that's, So way. that's weird that you say that though, because that's exactly how I feel. But in a social aspect right so i'll be in a crowd right and i'll i'll maybe say a joke or something like that and people will laugh but then it, it, then to myself I'll be like should i have said that so but and i'm i'm hoping that i get to the point where i don't feel like that anymore no but there's sometimes 
Well, I don't know because anxiety. I think you've once you've got it, I, I see it as so a bit Don't say like, you've always got it because that's when it goes, it'll kill me one no, day. <laughs> no, but I do think, no, but you learn to manage yeah. it. You're going to therapy, yeah. so you're getting yeah. all those tools and techniques Aye. to help you manage it. I tell you, you everyone can benefit from the therapy. The more <laughs> experience, I agree with that, the more experience, life experience and everything yeah. that you gather, the more you learn how to manage it. You Aye. will still get it. I mean, I'm not going to lie to you. I'll get up some mornings and go... Jesus, I, I am it. ripping really? with anxiety and I don't even know and why. I wonder how, like, don't what, know why. Like, but how I think my work? body, well, I actually think because I've had it since childhood and morning has, like, I would get it really bad in uh -huh. the mornings. That was my worst time because. Right. And was that I was like even going to school and all that? But you were like that? Extremely and bad. Did you, going did to you, school were you aware that it was thinking, anxiety? No. Right. I never learned that until well, I was right, much, okay. much older. So I just always had this really sick, nervous feeling. So that's wow. so I didn't know that that yeah. was anxiety. I didn't learn that until I was much, much older. Uh -huh. But I always had it worse in the morning because I was terrified of what the day would have. You know, like right. I was quite a nervous yeah. person, nervous right. child, and whatever. So I think because my body is. So, so you're used to, to waking, waking yeah. up with anxiety, yeah. but there are still days where I wake up like right. that, just and almost in a panic, yeah. like you know, That's and bad. having to calm myself yeah. down because that is actually yeah. nothing. But it's wrong. good. It's good that you've been able to recognise that though and deal with it, mm. and as in like this is just a feeling I yeah, have yeah. inside me, whereas. I but think, that's what I'm I saying. Think anxiety, manage yeah, it. but I think it terrifies me so much now because that was not me as a person, and it's yeah. it's made me aware of mm -hmm. how much it's changed me, and that's why I say like so. I am very, in regards to people deserving second chances and all that, I'm not so sure, right? However, I I believe that everyone can change, mm -hmm. and the only reason I believe that is because I know how much I've changed, yeah. like a hundred percent. Anyone that knew me before steroid withdrawal does not know me now, and I swear by it. And I, me and Kyle have these conversations all the time because it's it's had a shift in our relationship. It's changed our relationship and how we are with each other. Get me wrong, like there's a very long period of time we couldn't be together, right? Mm -hmm. So that had a huge impact on our relationship. But like just in general, now that I'm starting to get back to myself, I'm realizing that oh, I react that way to these things and I act mm -hmm. that way to these things, and it's just no normal for me. So now I'm like, I kind of get that, I don't know, just people in general Life just... experiences definitely impact uh -huh. on who you are as a human. And it makes definitely. you think, like, are they, was it all meant to happen? Like, is it, is it I, meant to yeah. tell, is it meant to put you down a certain... Because now, like, I'm, I would say I'm quite selfless now. I think before, I was probably quite selfish in maybe how I acted and how I treated people, but that, that wasn't because... It wasn't because of how I felt about them, it was because of how I felt about myself. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. no, I've that, always that's kinda... a very important thing yeah. to say. That applies to everybody. Whatever yeah. issues, even if somebody is putting something on you, everything that you put out is all about what's going on yeah. inside you. Doesn't yeah. matter who you are and what yeah. you're doing, it is all about yeah. how, you know, and if you've got healing to do and whatever, and you're you know, putting out anger, that's because yeah. you've got something inside. Yeah. I mean, we all get angry and whatever, yeah. but do you know what I mean? If you're yeah. walking about day to day, there's something But that's this is the thing. So the therapist, so obviously when I talk to my therapist, like I talked to her about everything that's going on in my life and all that, especially in the last few years. And she, she, she they just make, like they pick up on things that you were saying, they kind of make you look at it in a different way, right? So she said, because I only spoke to her on Tuesday, right? And she said to me, she went, Nicole, it sounds like you spend your life always trying to justify yourself. And I, f I was like, well, how do you mean? She went, well, for example, your skin. She went, you're trying to justify it to the dermatologist that you're damaged with steroids and they're not listening to you. Family issues that I've, that I've dealt with, personal issues, constantly having to paint this picture for people to understand and people to believe mm -hmm. a certain thing and all that. And I'm trying to constantly justify my reasoning, my actions, whatever. And then now when I'm in a social setting and I, you know, just spend time with my friends and whatever and, and I get all this anxious. Like, I feel like just when I talk to people, I'm like, I'm talking at them rather than to them. Do you know what I mean? Like, even aye, when it comes aye. to, like, talking to people. Justifying yourself I've always, the whole time. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Mm. And, I, like, I've, I've, I've realised that I've always done that and I think it comes down to maybe lack of trust in other people because I feel like people don't understand me. 
So I'm always mm -hmm. trying to so, uh, give the whole the story. Because so I'm a total yeah. oversharer. I'm a total oversharer, and I tell someone everything and then eventually I'm like oh you're you get bored of this like I just won't tell you anymore Do you know I mean especially with steroid as well that people that like, I don't speak to that often if I bump into them in the shop and this is exactly why I don't like bumping into people right is that they're like oh how you doing like, how's your skin and all that like oh it's been really sore eh? and I'm like fucking really sore I mean <laughs> I in my head I'm like if you have an hour could you just uh -huh, sit down like, like I oh uh -huh, like I sit seat. down and let me actually tell you the ins and outs of all right do you know what I mean? In my head, I'm like, okay, I mean, okay. Right. it was really bad. But I'm better now. And I just totally, totally just brush it off because I'm like, I'm not going to, like, for a long time, I felt like I was convincing people of this mm -hmm. condition. I was convinced, I was trying to convince them of this illness. And it obviously came to the point where I was like, do you know what? I don't care. I know exactly what I'm going through. And this mm -hmm. is just that sort of thing. And obviously, now that I'm better as well, I don't need to do that. But I'm, I'm still so passionate about sharing it, sharing right. it. And, and and some days i don't as i said earlier like some days i, I want to completely forget about it and act as if it didn't happen to me but quite frankly i cannot do that because it has changed me so much it's still part of your life and it, always it always will it be always will it always be. will be especially in regards to medication or whatever i choose to go down to hopefully heal myself do you know what i mean but it will always have that hold on my life it'll always have some sort of control which i'm gutted about but I think that's exactly why. Like, if, if I see anyone with any sort of skin condition, I'm like, I hope you're not using a steroid. Like, no. please do not mm -hmm. use a steroid. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, shut up. Like, it works <laughs> and all that. It helps. And I'm like, it does help. I mean, it uh -huh. helped me for a long time, says, but it also made me a lot worse. There could be people out there that use them and never get any issues, but mm -hmm. how? So long as you're spreading your message, I yeah. think that's enough comfort and satisfaction for you to yeah. know that you're yeah. you are doing the right thing yeah. and that's that's what you need to be yeah. concerned with what are we I would now, say so right? I um, so, so I just much. wanted to say that we're going to share this on Instagram and I'll share a wee reel on TikTok anyway and you just to go back to what you had said you do although you are on Instagram you do share most of your journey with the whole skin yeah. thing on TikTok, on TikTok so people, aye, it's uh -huh. best for people you know yeah uh -huh. and I, I assume you're sharing when you're using products and the products oh, that you uh -huh. talked about yeah. and if you use anything different yeah. you'll share all of that I basically just share just everyday life really with having steroid withdrawal so obviously I'm although I, I'm not suffering with it now people just recovery. see you're in recovery you're in of recovery, it recovery, uh -huh. so yeah. I'm, I'm still in it and yeah. if I was you to stop my medication rest, yeah, exactly aye. so yeah it just is what it is but TikTok's mainly where I went on. It's because the community seemed to be on there. Uh, and obviously TikTok, mm -hmm. you kind of... Instagram's only people you follow and follow uh, you. Whereas uh, TikTok, there's, you've the get the, you've, mm -hmm. you, there's opportunity to reach out people people all over the world. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. that's... My algorithm is like just constant TSW. That's all it is now. And it's from people everywhere, all walks of life. So that's kind of mainly where the following is built up for just targeting... Steroid withdrawal. Yeah. Do you know what I mean, that's obviously main, people mainly follow me for that reason because that's where I post about it. So, right. yeah, everyone know anything. So people, that is what uh, it is. <laughs> yeah, and you've got a, a big community of people in the same boat there, so it is really helpful. Yeah. Um, to follow totally. you for that basically. Totally. Um, thank you so much. No, and thank I never you, said to honestly. me cover no glasses. I know. I, never said I know. That, we so cover no glasses. We didn't need to go far for this this morning, but not at all. Um, I know. Aye, but thanks. thank you so much. It's no. been great. No I've problem, we'll catch up I've with you. I know, soon. definitely. Thank you. See you. Bye. Bye.